Good morning, pharmacy. Okay, I was supposed to do the one, two, five the whole day. However, I had to take care of some things that I told Ms. Jane we were going to do that new topic. I say new topic, though we do have to be fresh because <clears throat> this is actually the major topic of the new topic for sequence communication. But before I do that, I wanted to do reviews of percentages. Again, I know I'm going to be very repetitive when it comes to the percentages and the IV bags, the normal saline, especially, you know why? Um, because on the PTCE and the EXCPT, a lot of questions come out um, that are percentage topic. Okay, so it's the basis for allegations the foundation of allegation, percentage topic, and concentration topic. So I'll be very repetitive. Um, one more thing. Before I move on, I'd like you to go to Blackboard. I want you to see I put resources in your PHA125. Go to Blackboard. Go to the resources part. So we're doing extra 30 minutes today. Instead of 11 to 12, we're going to do 1030 because I wanted to do these reviews. Go to resources part on PHA 125, your pharmacy math, and you will find in there three folders, and there are subfolders in there. If I started teaching this particular class, those folders will be in the content folder, okay? But as of today, what I did, I put them in the um, resources folder because it's just going to be resources at this point since I'm doing just a week three. Did you find that? Okay, so it's broken down into week one, week two, week three, and then the days, our week starts on Wednesdays, Wednesday to Tuesday. Okay, disregard, okay, the quiz is in there. If something pops up, the worksheets for week one and week two. Okay, however, those folders are still very, very good resources because I have video links in there, okay, from, I think that was recorded, if not 2018, 2017, from live classes before the pandemic even happened, okay? So don't expect professional recording. This is just a live class that happened and all of the topics are in there. So even if Ms. J covered the conversions part, and then the pharmacy math they supply quantity to the dispense. You can go back to week one and week two if you need more review or more references in video format. It's there. But week three is important. The videos on week three pertain to percentages, allegations, item bags, and all that fun stuff, which is the new big topic for this particular class. Um, a lot of students say that sequence to allegation, allegation topic, they hate it, they don't like it. Um, many pharmacists will say that too, but once you get it, it's easy. So I break it down, okay? Usually I like doing it three steps. Step one, step two, step three. I simplify things, okay? 
But for now, what I'm going to do, because I, I know Ms. Jay already covered the IV bags, she covered percentages, I'm going to be very repetitive. Okay. Let's start off with percentages. So concentrations come in different units. Okay. A concentration, aka, is also the strength of a drug. Okay. You have to remember that it may be in IU, international units. It may be in units form, okay? Or it can be in milligrams, 250 milligrams. That's the strength of the drug, right? 250 milligrams. Even if milligrams is weight, 250 the milligrams part can be a measure of concentration or strength of the drug. Follow? Okay, so let's go back. On tests, you will hear me say hint, hint, wink, wink, remember? Okay. I did something, by the way. I took the EXCP test two weeks ago, last week. <laughs> I told you I like walking your shoes, right? I'm gonna talk about that in another topic, but I may incorporate it as I talk. That's why I said, Ms. Jay, I'm gonna repeat this topic, okay? I took a peek for you, okay? And I was telling Ms. Jay, yes, it's so much easier for me, huh? For our curriculum, I think the students will agree to it. If you take the EXCPT and take the PTC, I think you will say the same thing I said. So much easier than the PTC. Okay, and I was telling Ms. Jay, once they've done their law and ethics and tech duties, and you know your top 200 drugs, especially the do not take this with this, the interactions, there's a lot of loss, by the way. Okay, for that EXCPT. Once you get that, you can take the test. So I took that, I just bought the review, their official review guide, like practice test. There's six practice tests in like individual topics, practice test. I didn't even go through that. I just wanted to peek. So I took four of the six and I'm saying, take the PTCE, I guess, okay? But if you say, for example, you did it three times, you really can't pass. There's no one stopping you from taking the EXCP because you get the same title, CPHT. I know there's differentiation. Sometimes employer would prefer the PTCB1, okay? But title-wise, after your name, you still get certified pharmacy technician, okay? Worst case scenario. Well, none of our students have gotten or taken the EXCPT yet, as far as I know. It's always the PTCE. But I walk your shoes just in case there'll be somebody, hopefully not, who couldn't pass the PTCE, okay? And I'll incorporate that as I go lecture on uh, the next topics that I'll be covering, okay? So going back to concentration, you have to remember again, concentration, concentration is abbreviated as C-O-N-C, okay? It's also the same as strength. On tests, when you see percentage, which is another unit of measure of concentration or strength, they don't specify most of the time that that's weight over weight or percentage weight over volume. It just looks like this, percentage. So you're gonna have to get, if you don't have a physical chemistry lab class, right? Because you don't know if that's in liquid form. Right? You don't know if that's in solid form. Right? Because you didn't physically hold that particular compound or material or chemical. So I'm going to give you tips and tricks on how which one are you going to use? Okay, which is important in the test. Because most of the time when they ask you a question or how the questions are worded, it will be just percentage. So is it weight over volume? Is it volume over volume? Right? You're wondering, like, is this a liquid form? I don't even know. Okay. This will all get tied together once you do your compounding class. Okay. But before we move on, I want to do terminology, which I don't know if Ms. J already did terminology. Solute, solvent, solution. Not yet. This will be on your final exam. Okay. Solute, solvent, and solution. I know Car, uh, Kyle did um, chemistry. So, it's very basic for him. It was probably an experiment you did when you were in elementary for a science class. Okay, 
You need to know the terminologies first. Okay. I'm trying to get the board <laughs> so I could upload it to your Blackboard later. Okay. Solute, solvent, and solution. When you say solute, the substance to be dissolved. So this, this in this example, this is sugar or salt. That's your solute. Okay. Solute is the substance to be dissolved. That means most of the time, take note of my words, most of the time it's in solid form. This is your sugar. You add water. This is your water. This is now what you call solvent. Right? If solute is the substance to be dissolved, and usually in solid form, solvent is the dissolving medium. So what form do you think this will be in things of matter? Liquid, right? Okay. Here's the thing. Will sugar dissolve in water? Yes. Yeah. You stir, yeah. Mechanical addition of the mechanical component, which is stirring, addition of heat. Okay. Yeah, but it will dissolve eventually. <laughs> right? You use a spoon, you stir it, it will dissolve. And when it dissolves, when sugar dissolves, what happens to this mixture? Will sugar dissolve completely? Yes, in time, right? It will dissolve faster with catalysts like heat, agitation, stirring, follow. Okay. But sugar will dissolve and this will be a liquid form altogether. Can you follow? And this is what you call now a solution. So if I'm to put that in an equation, it will be solute plus solvent equals solution. Hint, hint, wink, wink, final exam. Moving forward, a lot of the things I'm going to say is for the final exam and the PTCE. This one week with me. Your one week with me. Okay. Yeah, so all you can solve it equals solution. You follow? That's the formula. If I have to put that in a formula. So ute is the, is the substance to be dissolved. Solvent is the dissolving medium. And the combination is called a solution. However, there are cases wherein the solute doesn't fully dissolve, right? Once you get to your PHA225 sequence three compounding, which is the next class, okay, you will differentiate a solution from a suspension. A solution becomes one phase. Terminology again, hint, hint. Wink, wink, um, PTCE. When it becomes one phase, it's called homo, it's one, genius, okay? But in the case of suspension, do the powders dissolve 100%? No. There'll be some powders that will not dissolve because suspensions are meant that way. You will add that liquid, which is your solvent, but a suspension will not 100% dissolve. That's why we add suspending agent and the auxiliary label, all the things that are coming out of my mouth right now are gonna come up on your PPP. We add a suspending agent and an auxiliary label, if you have a suspension, what do you add? Shake well before using. Why? Think about an antibiotic, moxicillin, right? If you have uh, younger brothers, younger sisters, or you yourself, and you did the liquid or the suspension one. The active ingredients are on the powder. It's at the bottom. If you set it in the refrigerator, all active ingredients will be at the bottom, right? That's why, hint, hint, wink, wink. 
Suspensions will always have a shape well before using label. This will come up on major exams in your final exam. And this will be covered more in detail during your compounding class, BHA 225. And you follow. So do not expect, my point here is do not expect that all powders will dissolve 100%. But if they did, or if they do, it forms a solution. And that solution, because it's one phase, is called homogeneous. If it doesn't form one phase, what do you think it's called? Then it becomes heterogeneous. You follow? I'm just going over the terminologies, which are necessary in the PTCE, EXCPT. Not really on the finals right now, but on the compounding finals. Okay, you clear? Just defining each one right now. So I'll use solvent solution. Another scenario. Well, Ms. L, do all solvents come as a liquid form? Not always. Your solvent can be in a semi-solid form or another what powder form, solid form. Okay. To make the mathematical equation and calculation simpler, we go by this formula. Solute plus solvent equals solution, okay? And you have to remember that solute is the substance to be dissolved and the solvent is the dissolving medium. If you cannot identify which one is the solute, which one is the solvent, what should you go by? Less or more, okay, so which one is it? Very good answer though. You're very close. So the smaller amount would be the, the solute. The larger amount would be the, the solvent. You follow? If they're both solid, that's how you should, that's how it should register in your brain. They're both semi-solid. Right? Which one is less would be the solute, which one's more would be the solvent. Okay. Technically, we call them compounds now. Okay. And here are your magic words. Now let's tie this into percentage. We're still good? Same page? All right. Let's tie this into the percentage. We can already talk about that because this is the basis of percentage, okay? Concentration. Your percentage will always be either weight over weight, percentage volume over volume, percentage weight over volume. You follow? But how do we know this L which one to use? Because this one doesn't show up most of the time in time. Yeah. One tip. It's usually this, okay? When they come out as a liquid form, it's usually this. Weight over volume is the most common percentage. Follow? However, not always the case because volume and volume over volume will always come out, come out a solution, a liquid form, okay? So Ms. L, how do we know that it's weight over weight? Here are examples. The word ointment. I'm telling these tips to you because you didn't have an actual physical chemistry class. The word ointment. What's the percentage of the ointment? Because the semi-solid is still considered solid. You can measure that in terms of grams or weight. Those are the magic words, ointment, gel. So think about semi-solids paste okay that's how you know okay another important thing to remember no matter what when we're talking percentage okay weight will always pertain to grams grams can be abbreviated hint hint wing wing major exams as capital G, lowercase g, capital G, lowercase m, 
lowercase gm. Okay, I noticed that on the PTCE, they like using the GM abbreviation for grams. Okay. Do not, 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 never, never confuse this with the unit GR, which means grains. Totally different conversion. You follow? This is how the test will get you. And I'm giving you a lot of tips right now. You have to remember, no matter what storm, fleet, or hail, your weight, when it comes to percentage, will always be in the unit grams. So if the problem given to you is in milligrams, what do you do right away so it doesn't throw you off? And the problem is a percentage problem. What do you do? Convert that to grams right away. Because you know how they trick you? They're going to be giving you options in milligrams all four options in milligram. Or they're gonna give you a milligram variable with grams options, which should give you a hint that apples to apples, that's the first thing that you should be thinking of. Second one, I may have to convert it now or before I answer the multiple choice question. Follow? No matter what, this rule will not change. When it comes to percentage, Weight will always be in grams. You follow? Okay. And volume will always be in milliliters. Real abbreviation for milliliters is lowercase m capital L because liters abbreviation is capital L. Okay. However, we do accept like this sometimes or like that. That's acceptable too. Okay. But know that no matter what, when we're talking percentage, your volume will always be in ML. And this is how they throw you off. What do you think they're gonna give in the variable? Leaders. What do you think they'll give in the options? Leaders or vice versa. You follow? Those are the things you watch out for. And that's, how, that's a lot of questions like that, both in the PTCE and EXEPT and even our own final exam, okay? So now we've settled this. We know that once we move here, it can be weight over weight, volume over volume, or weight over volume, okay? Weight over weight then, if we're talking percentage, would be grams over grams times 100. Ms. L, but I think Ms. Jane likes it the other way. Yeah, it's to say grams over 100 grams. Exactly the same, okay? Another one, volume. So this will be ML over ML times 100. Ms. L, but Ms. J said ML over 100 ML. That could work too. Okay. So when it comes to weight over volume, this becomes grams over ML times 100. Sometimes this is more useful depending on how the problem was worded, but sometimes this is more useful if it's already given. You follow? So this will be grams over 100 ml. But let me tell you this, another tip, another very, very, very important tip. When we're talking numerator, okay, we're talking weight here, right? So numerator will always be weight of solute. Weight of solute, volume of solute, weight of solute. We follow? Okay, your time percentage. Okay. And your denominator will always be total solution, not solvent. We follow? Not solvent. The reason I'm telling you this is many times the questioning will be tricky. You have to remember that the denominator will always be total. Sometimes the question is how much water was added. That's where you subtract the amount of the solute from the total solution. I'll talk about powder displacement next. Can you follow? Okay. So you have to remember in percentage, it's always weight or volume of solute over total weight or volume of solution, not solvent. 
You follow? Okay. Now let's put that into powder displacement before I move on. What are you talking about, Miss Al? Okay, for example, this is a vial. I'm not very good at drawing. Probably when God showered talent for drawing, I was so sleep. I was sleeping or hungover. <laughs> I wasn't out for sure. <laughs> But when God showered skills for a map, I was so wide open, I think. <laughs> so anyway, so this is your vial. There's a powder for a con. Have you seen your vial, the yellow powder? Okay, you guys have seen it. And then you inject water in it, right? Or sterile water for injection. So this is your powder. These are powders for reconstitution. I'm just going to take this as an example. There's a powder here. The label will sometimes say, okay, this powder, because it's going to be tied to specific gravity, is going to be one gram. Because water specific gravity or water's density is one gram per ml, specific gravity is one. So a one gram substance is usually equivalent to one ml. Follow? I'm talking now powder displacement. So you have this powder. It says that this is one gram powder. I just said one gram will be equivalent to one ml, right? So if the final volume, okay, becomes, say for example, 1.8 ml, what is the powder displacement? 0 0.8, very good. The reason being is, if I'm to create a formula, it will be final volume, which is 1.8 ml minus initial volume, which is one ml gives you a powder displacement of 0 0.8 ml. You follow? Okay. I remember this experiment in science when we were in elementary school. There's this water on a beaker, in a beaker, 100 ml. Teacher dropped a pebble inside. The water level became 110 ml, then she asks us, what is the displacement? And that's what I'm talking about, right? So it means that this pebble is 10 ml. This other could not be 10 ml. It's not liquid in grams. I'll talk about specific gravity next. 10 grams. Can you follow? So if that comes up on the test as two questions, hint, hint, wink, wink. You know what powder displacement? And this is the reason, exact reason why I'm telling you that you have to remember that this will be the solute and this will be the total solution. Because sometimes the question is how much water was added? And that's what you have to subtract from the total solution. Are you following? So it's, it gets complicated. Yes, it does, but it can be solved. If you just think about it, oh, the water level rose. That means that's the amount, which in our terminology, more technical, is a displacement. You follow? Go back to percentage. See how it's all like, uh, what's that? Like cobwebs, but they all make sense. It's gonna start clicking like puzzle pieces. Everything from the time I started comes out on the national, either one, okay? Be it terminology I'm talking about, be it the simple explanation I'm talking about, or a math specific problem. You gotta remember that math is not just math. It falls under patient safety. It falls under medications as well, okay. on those categories. Okay. Let's go back. You have to agree with me on this one. Do you agree? 
that a whole number can be converted to fractions? Yes. Okay. 30 converted to a fraction is 30 over 1. Okay. Do you agree that a fraction can be converted to decimals? Yes. 1 over 10. Use your calculator or adjust it using your brain. You know that 1 over 10 is 1 divided by 10, which should give you 0 0.1. Follow? Which means a whole number 100 in fraction is 100 over 1. Can you convert a fraction to percentage? Yes. So what is this? 1 over 10 converted to a decimal is 0 0.1. Converted to a percentage would be? We just do times 100, right? So what would it be? 10%. You follow? So now you're agreeing that a whole number can be converted into a fraction, can be converted into a decimal, can be converted into a percentage. Yes? Do not forget those, sen those words, that sentence, because in word problems on major exams, that's how they're going to trick you. And you also have to remember that fraction is also the same as ratio. Sometimes the concentration will not show as a percentage. It will not show as a, as a fraction, but as a ratio. One is to 10,000 milligrams. Hint, hint, wink, wink, even your final exam has it. One is to 10,000 milligrams. Oh my gosh or one to 10,000, I'm sorry, no milligrams. Oh my gosh, I don't know how to do this. It becomes ratio now, right? Because a ratio can be converted into a fraction and your fraction, you can convert it to decimal and your decimal, you can convert it to percentage. So don't, oh my gosh, <laughs> right? Just think. Oh, Miss Ellen, the ratio, what do I do now? If it's given in ratio, there's invisible units in there right away. This will be in G, and this will be in G. It will not tell you, but it should be there in your head. Can you follow? So if I'm to ask you, one is to 10,000 strength or concentration, what is the concentration of this drug in percentage? One, convert this to fraction. So this will be one over 10,000, right? So one divided by 10,000 equals 0 0.001. Does it end there? No. To get the percentage, what do you do? You multiply it by 100, which is 0.01%. Can you follow? Don't get overwhelmed by the ratio. Have to remember, that's why I let you, I had you agree with me because I'm going to hold you accountable. You said, once you can write to the question, you said, that's small, right? So remember, listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth and what you're agreeing to, okay? A ratio can be converted to fraction. Fraction can be converted to decimal. And your decimal, you multiply it by 100, is a percentage. Clear? Okay. Are you learning something? Is it too fast? No? Okay. We good? Slow me down, okay? You missed a little bit, but luckily I recorded and it's mostly the board, okay? So I'm gonna upload this later. Okay. One is because we started early, but it's more review of Miss J's percentages. Okay? I'm just adding a little bit more info for finals, for PTT, for ESC. Right? But don't get overwhelmed by this. Remember what you said yes to. Okay? So here we go. I'm back. I'm trying to prepare you for the different possibilities that will come out on either the final, 
EXCPT, PT. Okay. And that's what will throw you off if you don't know this basics. Okay. You like throwing these questions. Okay. I'm going to talk about IV bag later because the normal saline is a very common question because a lot of people get confused by this and a lot of people um, don't get the answer to this correct if they don't know or don't remember that a normal saline, no matter what, will always be 0.9% sodium chloride. Always. And then they just put NS in there. It's like, there's a missing variable. I can't solve this. You can. If you remember that the normal saline will always be 0.9% sodium chloride. Follow? Yes? Okay. That's my next topic. I want you to breathe for five seconds. <laughs> Questions before I move on? Questions? YouTuber? You guys good? Yes. Yes, that's my next one. We'll see how, how far I, I can go today, but I wanted to highlight these things. Since it's the basic or the foundation of allegation and so many different concentration questions, there's a lot of questions that come out based off of this, either terminology, the way you do math is a simple percentage, convert this fraction into percentage. Okay. When lost, always multiply by 100, you get the percentage. Okay. The decimal multiplied by 100, you get the percentage. A fraction, change it into a decimal multiplied by 100, you get a percentage. Okay. Moving on, but this has to be tied to your ID bags. Okay. Your ID bags, because in compounding, we have sterile and non-sterile compounding. Okay, when you compound non-sterile, I'm talking about ointments, creams, lotions, right? Solutions, suspensions. They have concentrations. They have strengths, right? But those IV bags also have concentrations and strengths. You have to remember that. 5W. What does that mean? What does a 5 mean? That means 5%. Right? V10W. What does that mean? That means it's 10%. There's 10% of dextrose in water. It gets confusing on the salt part, the normal saline part, because there's a number there that you need to remember. Okay? Let's talk about this most common um, solutes, most common solutes in IV bags or the most common IV bags. D5W. Dextrose, 5% in water. D5W. So we know that V stands for dextrose, W stands for water. Okay? Think about dextrose as sugar. It's a sugar solution. And what's a sugar solution? A syrup. Yeah, if you want to put it that way. V5W, this means dextrose, 5% water. Explain it more. Dextrose, 5% in water. That's what does that mean? There's 5% of dextrose in water. Which one is the solute? dextrose. Which one is the solvent? The water. What do you think the solution will be? A sugar solution, right? Or a syrup. If you want to make it more like a common name so it's easier to picture since you're not yet out on externship, you haven't you haven't really, ex you had experience through uh, holding IV bags, um, reconstituting all of this stuff, but for you to be for it to be clicking more layman would be, oh, think about sugar solution, right? That shows five percent water. So the solution will be sugar form. Well, if it's 10%, the 10W, this means dextrose 
10% in water. There's 10% of dextrose or solute in water. What does that really mean? Let's go to the D5W first. You saw a number there right here, right? That means 5%, right? This 5% should be talking to you. Now that you know that it's solute and solvent, and that created a solution, you know right off the bat, without these numbers and units telling you that this is five grams, of dextrose in a 100 ml solution or dextrose solution. You see how I translated 5% into fraction right away? Why is that important? Because not all IV bags have the same amount of solute. It has to be proportionate so that you know that each one is 5%. Follow. So if I'm talking about D5W and I have a 100 ml IV bag, which I don't have right <laughs> now. If I say D5W here, I can picture that in the making of this IV bag, there's five grams of dextrose, okay? And then water was added to make a total solution of 100. Follow? But if this IV bag is not 100, but I still wanna make a dextrose 5% solution, but a But a 250 ml IV bag, will you still be using five grams of solute? No, this is where ratio and proportion comes into play. Five grams for every 100 ml, X grams for a 250 ml bag. Can you follow? Yes? Okay. Five times 250, help me out. Here's my calculator. It's twelve fifty divided by a hundred is what is it? Twelve. I'm trusting Kyle. And <laughs> five times two fifty equals divided by a hundred equals I didn't hear it. Twelve point five what? Grams. So. This 250 ml bag doesn't just have five grams of dextrose. It has 12.5 grams of dextrose for it to be D5W. To those of you with Zoom eyes disregard, I know it's a totally far right now. <laughs> Pretending that this is a D5W, okay? Can you follow? Uh, sorry. Old school story. You know, I already told you that I'm old school pharma, right? I graduated in 1998. So my first job in a hospital was, um, I was graveyard, then sometimes I do swing shift. During swing shift, we didn't have a lot of IV bags then. IV bags, I can't say if it doesn't exist yet or there's not a lot of it available yet. So in the old days, we would make our own solution in a glass bottle. I don't know if you watch the old movies where they hang that upside down, that bottle upside down. I made those. And that's why I wanted you to go back to that time. Like I'm telling you to picture it, I'm making this in a bottle, okay? In a bottle, okay? I was making normal saline. So I'd be measuring, which is my next topic, I'd be measuring salt in a way to scale that you're going to use put it inside that bottle, add water, seal that, put it in a cart, make so many of it, one liter bottles, okay? And the orderly comes and picks it up. Those are the uh, assistants before. Takes it for sterilization, autoclave that. The next day, they deliver that. It's got that wire you hand. 
I know what movies you've seen them. So he's smiling. It's true. I did that. Okay. And I was talking to this old pharmacist too, and he was like, "You did that?" I said, "Yeah, I did that." It's like in a, a meme or a movie or something. Yeah. I made glass bottles. He said, <laughs> "Yeah, you're older than me, right?" Like. We learned how to do like glass tubing, like the beginnings of ampules. I said, I'm not that old yet. <laughs> okay, but I'm telling you, so that you can picture better, imagine that you're making this IV bag. Okay. Now it's amazing. It's disposable, it's single use, right? It's, of course, it's more for patients. So it's the single use so that it's done, it's ready. Okay? We don't use those bottles anymore, but know that there are people who did that before. Okay, and it helps. Now it's easier to picture that, oh yeah, it doesn't have the same amount of sugar. It doesn't have the same amount of salt. Okay, you follow? Well, this is pretty easy when we're talking about D5, W, D10, W, just duration proportion, right? What throws many students off or test takers off is the normal saline. Why? Without with sugar for now. Do one more example though. D10W, let's make this D10W. This tells you that there's 10% of dextrose in water, right? So there's 10 grams in 100 ml. But what if, how much would it be in a one liter? The question will be one L, because it's not apples to apples. So what do you do first? Convert that one liter into ml, which makes it? Thousand ml. This is your x grams. Reaction proportion again. Cross multiply. This will be ten thousand divided by a hundred. X would be one hundred grams. So if there's ten grams of dextrose, aka sugar, in a hundred ml bag, there'll be. Of course, it's times ten because it's times ten the amount, right? A hundred grams of sugar. AKA dextrose in this one liter bag. Can you follow? Okay, normal saline, another common one. So we got dextrose 5% in water, dextrose 10% in water. Um, we got lactated ringers. Here comes normal saline. Normal saline is not the same as sodium chloride. You have to remember that. Sodium chloride is the salt. Follow? Sodium chloride and the salt. The salt is the same salt that we use for cooking, that we like to use for whatever food. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. NaCl. And when we say salt, it can be potassium chloride, sodium chloride. Okay, so many salts. Even your drugs came from salts too, or in salt version too. Sodium chloride is a salt, so picture that. But when you hear the term, normal saline it will always be no matter what 0 0.9 percent sodium chloride 0 0.9 percent sodium chloride so why did it make it that way okay 0.9% sodium chloride is terminology, hint, hint, wink, wink, isotonic. And then isotonic solution, meaning same tonicity as the blood. Okay. So anything lower than 0.9, this comes up on the major exams, okay? Anything lower than 0.9, say, 0.45% sodium chloride. That's a hypotonic solution. You follow? This three terminologies I'm going to be mentioning will come up on your nationals. So anything higher than 0.9 becomes 1% sodium chloride is a hyper tonic solution. I had a question on the EXTPT. It just asked me what does hypo mean or hyper mean. So know that hypo is less, hyper is more, okay? 
and sodium chloride, 0.9%, is called normal saline, and that's isotonic. You follow? Sodium chloride is not, sodium chloride is Na, capital N, lowercase a, from sodium, and then why sodium? Why Na? Natrium, not trium. Okay? Cl, chlorine, chloride, okay? Capital C, lowercase l. Sodium chloride is not the same as normal saline. Okay, not the same. Sometimes you'll see NSS, normal saline solution. When you hear normal saline, first thing that should come to mind, 0.9%. Is it even 1%? No, it's less than 1%. Did you already do law? Some of you did, remember? Um, who did um, Emily's law? Can you tell them the story about sodium chloride? That if you're familiar with it, Kaylin. Very familiar. Wasn't she supposed to celebrate her second birthday? She was supposed to be cancer. She was given 23%, 23 point something percent of sodium chloride instead of a 0.9% sodium chloride. Calculation error? She made the bed from scratch, even if it was so be a smart There's a reason why we're not doing bottles anymore to prevent medication error for sterility related reasons. Okay. So Emily's law, Emily is the baby that Kaylin's talking about. She died because of overdose of sodium chloride. That's why I said this is important. That's why you always ask this on tests. To know that normal saline will only be equivalent to 0.2% sodium chloride. We're going to talk more about that once we get to law. If you haven't got law with me, okay? they just finished law and they presented this case. As, okay, this is one of those cases where it's definitely a calculation error, right? I'm not going to talk about um, staff fatigue or under staff, all of these things. We're not going to talk about that right now. However, it just proved to you that by not knowing this, it can cause damage. That baby is supposed to celebrate her second birthday that was her last round of chemotherapy. She ended up in the morgue instead of at home celebrating her second birthday of cancer. So there was a law created after her name, Emily's Law in Ohio. Look at that. Okay. You don't want to be part of that stats. Right? This is why I do this. Okay. Going back, normal saline is 0.9% sodium chloride. This terminology is, okay. if you know that normal saline is 0.9%, anything lower, isotonic. I mean, hypotonic, because it's an iso. Okay? Iso is equal. Equal to the density of the blood. So anything lower is hypo. A question came up on the EX and PT for me. What does hyper and hypo mean? Yeah, testing you, something like that, okay. Hyper, anything above 0.9%. Now let's talk normal saline. If normal saline is 0.9, what is half normal saline? What is half normal saline? Yeah. 
zero point four five percent, don't put n s. This becomes the salt sodium chloride. You just divide it by two. Okay. Another thing always comes up on the PTCE and EXEPT. A lot of questions. Okay. This rule. Do not forget your leading zero. Okay. Because our brain is not programmed to look for that decimal point before a whole number. It's going to test you four options, which one is the correct answer. One will have a zero in the front, one of the options, the other one won't. Don't make that mistake of choosing because it's the correct answer. Because we have rules. Do not use list. Okay? Do not forget the leading zero, but drop, drop the trailing zero. So if your answer is a decimal less than 100, put that zero after the decimal point or put in zero before the decimal point, I mean, okay? If it's 0.45, yeah, layman's term is correct, right? But we want to prevent medication errors. This is why on the test, it's testing you whether you know the rules. 0 0.45, do not forget the leading zero for, decim for decimals, but drop that trailing zero. Your final answer is 10%, do not do 10.0%. This is misleading. Our brains are not programmed to look for that decimal point after a whole number. So drop that. Always a question, both PTCE and EXCPT. It's testing you. There'll be two options with correct answers, but they're not truly entirely correct based on rules, right? The MG symbol should be spelled out, milligrams. A lot of questions on the EXCPT came up as, which one should not be used in the abbreviation? QD, the QID, the QODs. Okay, my, okay, I can do what I'm saying. Okay, let's go back. Half a normal saline would be 0 0.45, and then a quarter normal saline would be 0 0.225. What do I put here? Your solute, not normal saline, comes in ACL. You follow? Okay. So I had a student back in the day. She finished a program. She went to work at Clark County Detention Center, which according to her is the safest place you can work in because she gets ex escorted by cops when she walks in and when she leaves. And the only thing they see from you, they have to make sure your nails are clean and nice. That's all they, I call those settings the dungeon. Okay, <laughs> so here comes a nurse asking for a normal saline, okay, from her. And she gave the nurse, I don't know, it's a nurse, yeah, and I don't know exactly, okay, said, why are you giving me 0.45% sodium chloride, the prescription called for a half normal saline? My student her to be, to be respectful, she said, because um, a normal saline is 0 0.9 percent, so a half normal saline would be 0 0.45 percent. Ah! I said, I wish I was there. I asked, I, I'd asked her, would you go to school? <laughs> would you teach her? Yeah. <laughs> so I always am the proud mama when I walk in pharmacies because your pharmacist, pharmacists always tell me, oh, you know, your student caught a medication error or did this or that. Okay. So if they ask who your teacher is and you mess up, I don't know that student. <laughs> <laughs> but if they did good, you did good. Oh, that's mine. I always say that though. I don't really, I never really said that's not mine. Okay. I always say that's mine. <laughs> anyway, that's ours. So going back, listen to this. Remember this. So now let's put that into perspective. Normal saline would then have, if normal saline is 0.9% sodium chloride, not NS, this means converting this into a fraction, a word king equation, this will mean 0 0.9 grams. Agree? for every 100 ml, agree? Yes. 
So there's 0 0.9 grams of salt in this 100 ml bag, right? But if you were to manufacture or make a thousand ml bag, which AKA is one liter, they usually would say one liter bag. Okay, so convert that X grams. How much solute? Hint, hint, wink, wink, final exam terminology. How much solute is in this one liter bag? Nine G or nine grams of sodium chloride. Another hint, hint, wink, wink. Your test, quiz, final exams. Get used to this. It will say blank of solute or blank solute. When you're given that problem or that type of format, blank solute, your answer should be nine G or nine grams of sodium chloride because your solute is sodium chloride. Is that clear? Sometimes it will say blank G of solute. But be careful, sometimes it doesn't have the G, so specify the grams. Okay? Those are the possible formats on your quiz or on your test. Can you follow? Let's do some practice on percentage before I move forward. Only five questions, then I have 15 one. Make sure you guys have knocked it down. Only five questions. You guys are good in math, but you know, I've encountered so many students that this isn't clicking fast. It's not. I have to repeat it many, many times for it to finally click. Each student is different. Calculators are a must. I'll be teaching all of the math classes. If you are to buy a calculator, I don't have specific requirements except for the square root functionality. Why? You need that on sequence four for body surface area. That's it. So even if you get a dollar store calculator, buy at least three. <laughs> so you the battery dies. Okay, you have a backup. Make sure that it has a square root functionality because you need that on sequence four for body surface area. Okay. I haven't forgotten we still have specific gravity topic. Okay. We're just reviewing percentage, the IV bags, and um, then do specific gravity, and then finally allegation. So the bulk of allegation will be tomorrow. Tic-tac-toe method and the formula method, which is C1V1, C2, allegation and dilution. Ready? Easiest way to solve this is patient one. Right? I'll tell you there are students who kind of come to me, they do not in that way. But in time, through time, I've been teaching 14 years, I limited it to two ways. Ration proportion, dimensional analysis. That's it. I actually encourage the student to stop multiplying or dividing when converting. Because if you multiply and it's supposed to be divided, that's a thousand times overdose, right? And if you divide, when it's supposed to be multiplied, 
that can be a thousand times underdose. And people don't know that an underdose is just as bad as an overdose, especially when we're talking about antibiotics. Ready? For the five questions. You can keep up to the hundredth place, two decimal places. So if your answer is 0 0.125, it can be 0 0.13. But don't forget the rules, 0 0.13. Keep the leading zero, drop that trailing zero. Ready? Okay. Number one, Kaylin, answer. Second blank. It has to be sodium chloride. If you put NS in there, I'll mark you wrong. Even if you got the 2.25 grams correct. You understand? Because it's asking you the sole use. Is that clear? And then for this particular set, there's a G in there. Don't get used to it because the other tests don't have G in it. Okay. Number two, Jordan. Correct. It's 1.13 grams or 1.125 grams. Oh, it has to be sodium chloride. Capital N, lowercase a, capital C, lowercase l. Good job. Um, Clyde, number three. 0 0.56 grams of sodium chloride. Very good. 0 0.56 grams of sodium chloride. Number four, Kyle. 12.5. Correct. 12.5 grams of dextrose. There's a letter G in there, so you don't have to do that. Don't get used to it. Number five, Leslie. In there. Okay, I'll wait. <laughs> no excuse. The next. This will be homework due tomorrow so that we can jump to the new talk. More practice. 15 questions, but same as what you just did first five. Questions submitted tomorrow in the back in basket. Correct. Number five would be twenty five grams of dextrose. Very good. So you're told you there is dextrose. Any questions at this point? I probably could go over specific gravity like more just the allegation information. Okay. I told you the tips, right? When it's weight over weight, the magic words are ointment, paste. They're in solid form. And then most of the time, it's weight over form. So even if you don't know potassium permanganate should, what is potassium permanganate? It will tell you the dosage. Most of the time it's weight over volume. So even if it's volume over volume, there's a giveaway there, it's in solution form. What's the giveaway to use weight over weight? It's going to be ointments, paste, gel. Moving on. The percentage weight over volume or just weight over volume is necessary for the specific gravity topic. Okay. This topic will be specific gravity, which, you know, one, two questions get thrown in there in either finals or um, major exam. What is the real definition of specific gravity? Specific gravity is a comparison or a ratio Okay, the density of the substance in comparison to a reference substance. Can you follow? But they're both density, okay? They're both density. And what is the unit for density? Density is measured in grams per ml. Can you follow? Grams per ml. 
but specific gravity doesn't have a unit of measure. Why? Because it's ratio in comparison to the density of a reference material or substance. Can you follow? And usually that comparison is water, which I kind of mentioned a while ago. You always have to remember that the density of water is one gram over one gram per ml. When you see one gram per ml, that means one gram over one ml. So whatever the answer is, when you're given the weight and volume, it's usually the specific gravity. You just take out the G. Follow? Okay. Because it's in comparison with the reference substance for material. Example, what is the specific gravity of a substance that weighs Wait, there's weight. So I put that right away. 80 grams, right? And occupies a volume. Ooh, there's volume right away. Put it there. Of 120 ml. What is the specific gravity of a substance that has a weight of 80 grams? First thing you should check is are the units correct? Yes, it's already in grams. Yes, it's already an ML, so no conversion needs to happen, right? So what do you do? 80 divided by 120 is 0 0.67, right? This alpha unit should be grams over ML. But remember, the definition of specific gravity is in comparison to. So if you divide that by 1, which is the specific gravity of water, this gets canceled out. This is why I said, well, it's an extra step. You just have to really take out the grams per ml because usually it's in comparison with the specific gravity of water, which is one, okay? So does a specific gravity has a unit of measure? No, you will only see 0 0.67. But if you're asked, what is the density of this substance? What is your answer? 0 0.67 grams per ml. Did you see the difference? Okay. Remember, specific gravity is in comparison to. It's a ratio. Usually, it's in comparison to water, which happens to be one gram per ml. Here, one more. Um, let's do it in reverse. You're given specific gravity. Okay of 1.2 and a volume of 130 ml. Now the question is, how much does this substance weigh? You can convert the formula first, or you can plug in the numbers, it is transpose, okay? So we know that specific gravity is weight over volume, right? And then here's your specific gravity. You can do it that way. And what, what was given? You got a 130 here, follow. And you got a 1.2 here. That's so I just want to keep it that way. That's okay, but don't forget that there's a missing number here, which is one. So you can proceed with your X, follow. 1.2 times 130 divided by one would be, what's the weight of your substance? Correct, 156 grams. Do not do 156.0. Drop that trailing zero. It will be misread or misinterpreted as 1,500. Remember the rules, you follow? But others like to convert the formula. What do they do, okay? Specific gravity equals weight over volume. So because I have a given um, weight of the weight equals specific gravity times volume. It's up to you. Some people like to convert the formula first and proceed. Some people just want to plug in the numbers. Doesn't matter. Okay? You follow? Okay. Another one. It's given in specific gravity and weight. 
the center of gravity of My cut your next specific gravity of 0 0.75. Okay. And the weight is 12 grams. What is the volume of the substance? What will the volume be in what unit? This G over M out. One here, so you can just proceed with yeah. it. Sixteen ML. Let's just sixteen ML. Hands up. Okay. Next one. Specific gravity zero point eighty one weight forty eight grams. What's the volume? This one's for my Since I need the volume of the body on the left side, zero point eight forty eight G. Do not forget this invisible number one, so you can just see the cross multiplication. Because you agreed to me that a whole number can be converted to a fraction. <laughs> I have an <no> answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's one to my. Betty, my hat. The answer. Somebody help her. Correct. Fifty nine point two six. That happen. I just put this invisible one if you don't know how to transpose. So if you don't want to do the formula transposition first, because this specific gravity is a whole number. You just put that. If you're more comfortable with ratio and proportion than cross multiplication, this is the way to go. If you like to convert this to a formula, this is what you do. Okay. Put your x on the left side and then convert formula to whatever your um Clyde, this one's for you. Um, get the specific gravity uh, weight will be 80 grams, volume 
will be 185 mm. Specific gravity. Remember, we just dropped the unit grams per ml because it's all in comparison with water, specific gravity or density. This is density. Grams per ml is density. But the reason why the grams per ml gets dropped is because it's a ratio in comparison to a substance that's in grams per ml as well. So since water is one and water is what we use in comparison 99% of the time, we just drop the grams per ml. Ready, Clyde? Be, uh, Correct. Okay. So the answer will be 0 0.43 grams per ml. That's the density in comparison to water, which is a one gram per ml density. Your answer will be just drop that thing 0 0.43. Correct. Do not forget your leading zero. Drop that trailing zero. Okay. Last one for Ashley. Okay. Specific gravity. Is zero point forty three. Weight is eighty grams. What's the volume? Ashley, your answer will be in what unit? Correct. Turned out as 186.05 millimeters. But you're not going to do the math. You kind of just want to pay attention to just what I did. What did I do? I used the specific gravity. Put it here. I used the weight. I'm not to do the math. I'm going to put in there 185 ml since your PTC and EXCPT. Our multiple choice questions I didn't do the math, whatever is closest answer. However, there was a discrepancy if you noticed, right? It's because 0 0.43 isn't really 0 0.43. It's longer than that, right, Clyde? Yes. But we kept it to 120. You see? To be accurate to what Ashley did. Okay. But if I'm just to answer and I look, oh, she just used the same numbers, I'd say 185. Any questions on the topics? Tomorrow will be the tic-tac-toe method for allegation and dilution tic-tac-toe method and dilution formula C1, V1 equals C2, V2. You wanna get ahead, peek in the folders, okay? The resource folders for dilution and allegation. So you know how I set it up, okay? I'll give you a big practice problem tomorrow, very similar to your final exam from beginning to end with conversions, day supply, quantitative defense, allegation, percentage, um, IV bag, everything. Take that seriously. Try to answer that um, without help from others. And that kind of guarantees you're gonna pass the final exam or ace the final exam, okay? The big practice problem may be six pages, five pages, but that's for last. That's kind of our review for the final exam, which covers all the topics. So that's after I finish the allegation topic tomorrow. If we need to uh, extend that up to Monday, the allegation, we will, we will do that. However, I really would like to finish the allegation topic tomorrow, which Micah, if you could come at 1030 tomorrow, so we can finish the allegation topic. And on Monday, we can go over that 40, 50 question problem. 
So Tuesday, final exam, you're prepared for it. You don't even have to study if you, if you do that big practice. I can give that to you now so that those who are ahead can get started, okay? But you don't have to turn it in tomorrow just yet, okay? I just want you to take a peek and see the topics that will be covered for the final exam. You can start doing it. There's conversion questions in there. We're done with conversions. Percentage questions in there. Um, there will be the roadblock for you, which is the allegation part and reading the needles and syringes. So stop right there. Wait for that topic tomorrow or Go to the resources folder on Blackboard, watch the videos that I have there for you. It's up to you. But do the ones that you already know so that we're not waiting until the weekend to do this, right? And then Monday we'll go over everything, okay? Any questions? Okay, let's see, how do you feel about today? Pretty good, you okay? I know I usually don't do the transition. Miss J knows that, okay? I usually start and finish, but because I had to attend to some things, I am in the last week. Okay, Kyle, how is this math for you so far, freshman? It's good? You like it? Okay. Thank you for debunking that this is the most difficult um, pharmacy math topic. Okay, what about you, Jordan? It's good? Yeah, okay. Clyde? Yeah. Excellent. Did you say excellent? Yes. See, thank you. The bomb that, that this is a good concept. Yeah, we'll continue tomorrow. What about you, Ashley? It was really good, right? And these are maps that a lot of people, technicians and pharmacists would say, oh, I'm going to use this. But you know what? Let me tell you, you may use allegation if you go to a specialty setting in manufacturing. I didn't know I would end up in a manufacturing setting as a pharmacist. I didn't know. I just wanted to be on the books. I want to be a researcher. But I ended up in marketing. I ended up in business development. In the manufacturing setting, right? You'll we'll never know. But this is fun. This is going to be fun if you just have that mindset, okay? Um, how is it for you, Kaylin? Good? You like it? Okay. Micah, you're late today. So you missed a little bit, but I will upload this one, okay? How is it for you? Too fast? Too slow? You're okay? I got caught up? Still a little too fast, yeah. If math is not your strong suit, it'll be fast for you, okay? That's why um, when I do this, for the ones who are really good in math, sometimes like, it's just so slow, like slow. It's like, where do I, where do your teachers really place themselves? Like, you'll be too fast for people who's not, whose math is not a strong suit, but for the ones who are really good in math, you're like, oh God, this is so dragging, okay? So bear with us because we're trying to help both groups all of you guys, and there's tutoring always, two times a week, okay, either Ms. Jay or myself, okay? Today I cannot do tutoring because I have to run to uh, two site visits. I'll see Geneva today and I'll see Edwin today. So you're on your second site. Any questions? No questions? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Class starts at 10.30 tomorrow, not 11. Bye.